Guam Congress Hall now and bring Senator Joseph Augustine on. Um, good morning, Senator. Hey, mo morning, Chris. You got a hot morning. Wow. It's always hot in did, here. Did you hear what he <laughs> said, Senator? About yes, and, and, and uh, I, I know that my staff is listening to the radio, and they should be uh, more than likely they took notes because they know I'm going to ask them. Uh, look up and what what what's what's going on out there. Uh, yeah. and, and and I understand his his frustration, uh, and we need to get him some answers. And I guess the best way is to, um, I hope they took notes, like I said. And if not, if you, if you got. If you wrote it all down, send it to me, and uh, we'll give you a response. Um, well, yeah, we're gonna post this going link uh, later on today, so uh, you'll be able to uh, listen back to that interview. But I think he was really extremely concerned with the fact that um, if he were to uh, apply for PUA and if he, if he's eligible for PUA or receives PUA, that his SNAP benefits uh, would be he would be kicked out of the program. And well, it, it kind of doesn't make sense if if this PUA epoch is only temporary. Exactly, and I, I don't see the rationale behind that, that, that um, you know, you're getting an assistance, and then when you get another assistance that they're going to kick, I mean, why even give you the assistance if they're going to bump you out an assistance that's, uh, are, that, that, are, that lasts a lot longer than what you're going to get today? So it doesn't make sense, but I'll, I'll have I'll have my staff look it up, and we'll see. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe somebody's there. giving him the wrong information over at... Uh, uh, public health I, i'm not sure because i'm not you know I'm, I'm not working this program or anything but well, i'm hearing his concerns and that is concerning that he would suffer this uh loss of income or you know because snap it's for for food exactly chris and and, and that's what i mean sabrina and, and that's why i'm concerned is that uh that maybe they just need to take a look at it and and and, and maybe adjust what they're giving in the poor adjust the poor so that he doesn't lose the food stamp and, and move along and, and let's just get this out. I'm just, it, 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 it's frustrating on our side, but let's say to when we're like, that's a big fun, you know, come on, let's move along. Mm -hmm. Can't be that slow. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, it's obvious that people are still suffering um, <laughs> out there. And, you know, you do have control over, um, you oversight over finances of the government of Guam and I'm wondering if you are aware of any of the issues with uh, the Department of Administration in the processing of the Pugramani Salapi Zudini Tao Tao um, payment because we had heard from one of our listeners last week that there were boxes upon boxes of applications that are sitting in the Department of Administration's mm -hmm. office because they have not had the time to go in there and vet them and process them. I confirmed that yesterday, Sabrina. I spoke with uh, Mike over at the Department of Administration. It was a random, I was doing a follow-up on a FOIA a request and um, we are talking and then he somehow it had come up that, remember Lonnie, right? I, I think so. I wanna say, oh God. Well, we had a Abby? woman oh. call in who um, is trying to track her program in Azuda. Uh, um, Sluppy. Uh, uh, yeah, Sluppy para y shrimp patties, then he bananas dogu, <laughs> then he pussed it. Uh, he's tracking that application, and um, I guess this guy, Mike at DOA, had told her that there were just all these boxes, because DOA is the one that goes through the applications, which I think is interesting because it seems like it would be public health. Um, and so apparently there's a backlog there. Uh, and I wrote it down here. What did I write uh, to you, Bree? That they are on. If you have applied for the program in Azudana Salapi, they are only on May. God, I want to say May twelfth. And you know, there's got to be a delay because a lot of people uh, have been commenting over the last several weeks on our Facebook stream that they have not received anything. You're, you're referring to the one that the ten thousand dollars and below, right? No, we're, we're, referring we're referring to, to the, the, the governor's uh, financial assistance program funded right. by the Federal CARES Act. The $20 million that was uh, put out there for uh, people who were on existing, uh, who were uh, SNAP uh, recipients, and then other people who, okay. it was uh, like $300 per uh, 300 up to 1200 Right, yeah. And so yeah, we, we, we got word from DOA Senator that they're only on May 11th and May 12th. So that they're uh, they're pretty behind, it sounds like. Well, 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 let me find out why they're behind when they're supposed to be all back to work. So they mm -hmm. should be able to shift. Don't be in a rush to hire. Be in a rush to send out, clear and send it out.
I think what it is, because Tess tried to explain that, that, you know, these are added responsibilities of a DOA staff because they're having to do this and then they're having to do um, the EIP checks, processing of those. Um, what else? Oh. There should be there should be a one organized area where we corral different, uh, like a task force or, you know, how they're detailing people to labor. Well, obviously, we need to do the same with some of these applications for these other assistances that are, well, I mean, the deadline passed for the Azuda uh, program, but, I mean, it's clear, and talking to Mike from DOA, I mean, they're saying they're like three, four boxes full of applications dating as far back as May 11th, May 12th, we're seeing in the comments, some people said, oh, they were told May 5th, May 6th, which is, I don't know, Bree, that's kind of, that's kind of crazy. It's kind of sad because people sad. have been yeah. waiting for assistance. <laughs> and it's like, you know, we, we, we start these programs and then it, it seems like there's no follow through. So obviously they need, they need a helping hand there at DOA. Okay. I, I, I will have my, I, my staff already wants that me that uh, they're, they're going to be calling them in at 8 o'clock. Right. right. Yeah. Just right. talk to Mike uh, Schnepp over there at DOA. He's mm -hmm. the guy that's working on it. Yeah, well, we'll just grab Mr. Ed Byrne and ask him. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Show me and explain it. That's one way. Right. There's people. There's people waiting, and let's, let's just let's just get it. You know, you know, like they get say right done. on the comedy show. Let's just get her done. Get her done. Get her done. Get her done. Senator, so uh, you had a, a public hearing yesterday, right, for the uh, Stand Your Ground uh, Castle yes, Doctrine, sir. and was was it pretty bumpy? You think? Well, you know, I look at it this way. Um, um, it wasn't really bumpy. Uh, you know, you had three folks there that are basically speaking. The same language. There's, there's obviously they're from the same group. Uh, uh, I receive a lot of WhatsApp and a lot of texts from folks saying, you know, I support it, I support it, and I, I'm responding with, well, then get on the air and say it so people can hear it. Because they're only hearing one side. But um, uh, they're all going to be sending emails, uh, sending their testimony. Um, you know, they had they had good good uh, points they brought up. But at the same token, if the the bill is just it just I believe it's plain and simple. It just expands the castle doctrine to eliminate the requirement of retreat before they use the force. I mean, yeah. Of course, they're not going to—they're not going to support it. Some of the folks are because they're not victims. Versus people that are calling in, calling me, and pushing it. And you have to remember, Chris, that I brought this up last term yeah. and never got to the floor. I brought it up again this term. Uh, I finally got a hearing. Uh, what, 18 months later? Uh, wow, great, let's move along. And, I, and I've said it yesterday. Put it to the floor. You know, great, you had a hearing. You had a lot of, uh, um, what's that, um, data from the United States. Well, the last time I checked, uh, we're in Guam. We're not, we're not in Missouri. We're not in Washington State where, you know, you got the Wild Wild West going on. But here in Guam, we don't have that. And all the folks are asking for is the right to defend themselves. And sure, the you know, the... Attorney General's office came up, yeah, we already got this, yeah, we already got this. Well, really, you got it so well. What, what, why would those then people out to commit serious crimes? Uh, well, you know, they're released in 24 hours. Oh, okay, well, what else is going on? Public defenders saying this and, you know, folks, take a look at the bill. You got a recommendation to amend it? Uh, I think Mr. Terlai mentioned yesterday that uh, if there was training, great, that's a good amendment. Anybody issued a firearm, will get the basic weapons, you know, firearms training. That's a great amendment. I'm, I'm willing to put that in. I'm gonna recommend that that be put in and then we'll, we'll take a look at it. But the goal here is, is let's just make sure that the, the people of Guam, whoever it is, has a right, that has a right to, to own a firearm, that uh, has a right to defend himself. Mm -hmm. That's the basic. I don't know this bill. I mean, okay. can you can you just kind of break that down? Yeah. So we have the castle doctrine. That's Which where is the house, right? That's and so stand your ground would be where you could defend yourself wherever Anywhere. in the community. Anywhere you happen to be, right. in, for self defense. I mean, right. And for for self defense. And and, and it eliminates the need or the uh, what is it about retreating, Senator? So you don't have to that's retreat what, anymore. You don't have to retreat. I mean, but but you, it's it's got to be within reason. I mean. Any si uh, sound mind would think about it and say, you look at the person, he's being threatened. I mean, gosh, if, if you're 100 pounds and, and, you know, somebody like you, as big as you, Chris, comes up to the guy and says, you know, I'm bad. You know, I tell you what, the guy will freak out. And uh, 
if you make threatening movements to him, you can expect him to defend himself. But I'm I'm hoping the guy's not going to just reach for the gun right away. I mean, there's there's a point of um, of threat where it becomes eminent to the guy that he believes you're going to kill him. I mean, and, and let's face it, um, that all has to be measured and determined and evaluated by the attorney general, right, by the yeah. defense attorney. Because it sounds like a lot of hoping and gray area, Senator. Well, well there, there is, you know, and, and we have to admit that most of our folks now, they're all buying weapons. They're all applying to concealed firearms ID card. Right. They're all getting the training. But maybe we need to put the, we, I honestly believe, we not maybe, we need to put the training in also in the basic farm ID. You got to get a basic training. You got to be recertified, and you got to be educated. You know that's what we always say to to everything that happens. We got to get education more involved, and let's just educate our people that hey, if you do this, you could get this, <laughs> and mm-hmm. if you if you don't do what's right, and it's not sensible and reasonable among the uh, among the common person, you could go to jail. Mm-hmm. And Did- people have gone to jail when they have applied in the states. Uh, you know, and they apply the stand your ground, they've gone to jail because why? They believe the jury and the courts and everybody, even the defense was like, you messed up, dude, you shouldn't have done that. You know, that kind of stuff. Right. Senator, Has so, any, anybody uh, from the court or the AG's office provide any uh, statistics on when Castle Doctrine was used as a defense? I think they said it's never been used, right? I'm yeah, wrong. not yet. So, so it's no different. I mean, you look at it this way. The Castle Doctrine passed in Guam. How many have used it? I tell you what, when when that Castle Doctrine was passed, people would, would, would you know, only the very few do home invasion. And you know, I, I read that out during the hearing. The, the number of events that happened on Guam here on 2019. I didn't even look in 2020 because I'm like, you know, we got the COVID. Ain't nobody's invading anybody's home. Mm. <laughs> Everybody's just stay home. But if you take a look at it, there was numerous events that happened last year. And then the question would be, it's fortunate for them that broke in that they didn't get killed, which, which they could have. So it's obvious that even with the expansion, what are the, what are the chances? Remember, this is Guam now. We're not talking, uh, you know, anywhere in the States where you got all the mixture that just makes it terrible. Um, what are the chances that something's going to pull it and the Wild West is going to happen down at Epo Beach? I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I, I mean, but it's a, it's a possibility, Senator, because you know what we're Everything's seeing. Everything's a possibility. Right, yeah, because of the crime, and that's really what's driving the... Um, it, this is one of those weird things where when I see the evidence of it, there's no need for it. You know, the, you know, you know people haven't been using the Castle Doctrine, uh, and, you know, for the most part, nobody's had to really stand their ground and went to jail for defending themselves. Um, but where this bill really resonates with people is we're victims out here. Uh, you know, GPD, I'm just tired of hearing the short staffed, whatever, whatever the reason is we're victims out here. We're getting, yeah, they're just picking us apart. The criminals, but not but, only that there's crime that's being committed on this Island and they're not getting prosecuted right. or charged. Right. Um, we got seriously, murdered. We, you we, know, we got a guy got murdered right in front of his house, shot to death and there's still nothing on it. So people hear well, this stand your ground well, it's castle lesser doctrine, charges. and they like it because they're like, oh my God, yeah, and we're finally going to take matters in my own hands. That's why they, well, these kind of bills really thrive. Well, well Chris, I, I look at it this way. On the GPD side, I can't fault them because you can only hire so many and you can only find so many applicants, right, that qualify to get hired. Um, they're just trying to reach the magic number of 50 a year. Once they can reach that point, then then maybe you may say, well, we don't need the cast. We don't need the cast doctrine. We don't need to stand your ground. Well, nobody may have to apply that that rule if if this if this bill was to pass. But at the same time, exactly where you're coming from when you come about the attorney general. I mean, yesterday they talked about, oh, it's all there, it's all there, but you let them all loose anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know. So you know, it's it's GPD. GPD are great folks. They're, they're a bunch of great folks, but you can't blame them when. You know, uh, you got to remember that if you look at the number of police officers per village, there's not enough, right. and there's not enough qualified applicants to be to be hired. GPD would love to hire a bunch of folks, but at the same time, you've got the police department, you got the Department of Corrections, you got the fire, you got all the law enforcement that are looking for applicants. I wish we had a lot of folks because if we did, I mean. We would have, you you know, you wouldn't have just one police officer in a car. I know there's a filing cabinet full of applications somewhere. 
Ooh, they. they <laughs> you also have uh, questionable hires or right. agencies that you know. Why do we even have this agency? Uh, well, well, you know that, that that that's something that at the legislature, you know, we we, we don't do the alignment. Like, come on, Billy, like, Sabrina, be like, that there's a role the governor plays if she believes and and she can justify the existence of the different agencies. And I, I and I hear where you're coming from, Sabrina, and I hear where you come from, Chris. But we have to reach a point where at the legislature we take a look at the budget and we determine and what we're budget? Working with hmm. them. You know, we're working with them now, okay, and we're trying to see now how how best to fund the government and say, you know, governor, maybe you may want to take a look at some of these agencies that you need to merge, maybe consolidate, and and maybe we'll get those uh, boxes open at DOA so right. they can process those. Yeah. You know, maybe. though, I've heard about reorganization plans for years, yeah. and then you have a reorganization plan, then it's like, oh, and then somebody the gets over mad. inorganic, right. yeah. or, oh, or you have like deputy a... deputy directors, what? Yeah. <laughs> you had uh, what the Department of Land Management, Tomorrow Land Trust Commission, Ancestral Land, all these agencies under one. And then all of a sudden, now oh, they're breaking them up. To yeah, um, Senator, we got we got to uh, run. We got a couple other uh, calls uh, on, but I wanted right. to end here with the uh, choice. Uh, you voted in favor. What are you anticipating the governor's action will uh, be with this uh, Bill Three Six Six? Well, I'm, I'm well. I'm hoping I, you know, <laughs> I voted for it, so I'm hoping she will sign it. And if she doesn't, then we just go back to. Um, we just stay status quo, and we move on. And then we take a look at what are the other options next year. We look at what it costs this year, and we'll move on. Everybody keeps talking about the cost is going to go up. Cost is going to go up on everything. It doesn't matter what it is. Maybe insurance or buying other groceries or buying gas. Price goes up on Guam all the time, every day. You ought to do a law about that. Ooh, day. Okay. okay. Hey, thank <laughs> you. you have a nice day, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs> Wash your hands. Ooh, a day. <laughs> uh, let's keep it on the phones here. I want to bring uh, Lonnie Tamandong on from uh, the Giving Tree. Uh, Lonnie, good morning. Good 